Welcome to Ultium Designer Making the Connection. In this module, we will add wires and ports discussing the scope of each for making these connections as we continue our design capture by wiring up our placed components. Wires provide a means of connections between components within a page, either by direct connections or based on the net labels. One thing I must caution you about is the major difference between wires and graphic lines. I once saw an entire design with graphic lines used to connect components with the net labels from a customer. He called in asking why his PC board didn't show any connections or net names. I had to break the news to him that the design needed wires added and that the graphic lines needed to be removed. Needless to say, he and his boss were not happy. Adding wires is straightforward. Click on the wire icon and then click on the start of the wire and then the endpoints or the intermediate points. I know that pin 1 and pin 17 of J1 are tied together, so I will illustrate making that wire connection. Notice the crosshairs indicating the vertices of the wire. That's to help guide you when you're actually placing the endpoints. You may have seen also that when I'm drawing a wire that wants to move both in the X and the Y direction, that the preview shows where the tool will place the segments, both vertically and horizontally. If you want to change the direction that those are going, you can either manually place the endpoints, or you can hit the spacebar to flip the bending of the wire, like so. Instead of entering each wire one at a time, we can draw one wire and copy it. Selecting the wire, we notice it's highlighted. Just hit the Control c to copy it. Now we can use the typical Control v to paste one copy of the wire at every pin on the connector, like so. Or, we can use the Smart Paste feature found on the Edit drop-down menu. Note it knows that we have copied a wire. The listing shows what we have copied. If we had copied more than just a wire when we had done the copy, we could now check the checkbox for just the wire alone for the Smart Paste operation. Now comes the Smart Paste part. In the Choose Paste Action column, there are a number of choices. For now, we will select the Paste as Themselves option. Click on the Enable Paste Array box to create an array of wires with set spacing. Here we will set a single column and have 20 copies. Hit OK. And now we can place the wire group. We can move or copy these generated wires to add them to the other pins. Now to add the power and ground connections. Altium Designer provides power port symbols for both power and ground. These are global in scope. By that I mean these nets are connected throughout the design automatically. Any signal name assigned to a power port is globally available throughout the design. Here we see power and ground symbols. Clicking on the ground icon to place this power port, we can now add it to wires or pins as needed. To open up the properties window for it, hit tab, and we can assign another global name like analog ground or AGND to the ground symbol, as well as change the style of the symbol. We will leave it as ground for now, but to illustrate the various symbol styles, see the pull-down menu and select another symbol, and we'll place a couple of those power ports for the connector, one on either side. Let's extend the wires between pins 3 and 37. We would begin by selecting them, and now let's click on their endpoints. With their endpoints selected, we can drag them out or shrink them as needed. To make the connection between the ground port and the pins with wires already assigned to them, simply add a wire connecting the endpoints up. You'll notice the dots indicating the physical connections being made. Let's place the 3.3 volt and 5 volt power ports as well, again using the power port icon and tabbing to make changes to the net names. We'll finish adding wires and connecting up J1 now. If you have a device pin needing to be connected to power, you may place the power port directly on the pin. One typical example of this practice is for the capacitors. Simply place the power and ground ports on the pins and they are connected. Now that we have power and ground connections, we can add the net names to the remaining wires. In Altium, this is done using net labels. Click on the net label icon or alternately, Right-click in the schematic and pick Place and then Net Label. So let's begin. With the Net Label active, we can use a Tab key and then enter the name that we needed. 
Let's enter GPIO2. And now we can start placing net labels on the wires. It is important that they be on the wire or the pin, otherwise they are not electrically connected to the wire or the component's pins and will be floating. You will see the net labels incrementing as they are placed. This is a really nice feature as it speeds up assigning sequential net labels. This works for any name that ends in a number. If needed, the net labels can be changed afterwards by double-clicking on the net label and editing the name. Note some of the net labels created will not be used and can simply be deleted as needed. One more useful feature involves using net labels to automatically generate wires. First, let's select some net labels and we'll place them directly on their respective J1 connector pins. Now with them still selected, we hold the control key down and use the mouse to drag them away from the connector causing wires to be created. This is simple, quick, and just one more way to get wires added to the schematics. As mentioned earlier, net labels and wires only connect on their particular sheet. They are not global in scope. To make external connections, Altium uses ports. We saw the concept of ports in the context of power port connections. Instead of using the port icon to place ports, we will use the right mouse button within the schematic to open up a window menu where we can select Place and then Ports to start placing ports. Again, in Altium, there are many ways to do the same thing. Note the Place submenu has a lot more options. You can right click on the schematic and the Place pull down menu for placing a number of elements. We'll start placing ports now. With the port attached to the mouse and ready to be placed, hit the Tab key so we can enter the proper name. The Port Properties window provides a way to customize the color and name, as well as the direction of the port. We will enter SDA1 and select Bidirectional for this first port. Hit Carriage Return and start placing the port on the wire, which is on pin 3. The first click defines the left side of the port, and then the second click completes the length sizing and the location of the port, allowing the length to be tailored to suit your needs. Now we can go ahead and place more ports, first hitting the tab key to assign names and directions and then placing them. Just like with the net labels, once placed, the port definition can be edited by double clicking on it and modifying the properties window. Here we have the processor interface with ports, net labels, and the wired connections completed. Let's save this as complete and now open up the CAN interface schematic to continue wiring up the design. Looking at the CAN interface, you'll notice we have already added some wires and net labels as well as power ports. We want to underscore an important connectivity feature within Altium. If within a single schematic sheet two wires are labeled with the same net label, they will be connected on the PC board. One example of this connection using net labels is illustrated with the CAN RxD connection, which is between UC1 and UC2. You'll notice UC1 pin 2 has the net label CAN RxD on the wire attached to it. UC2 pin 4 has a resistor connected to a wire with the same net label. These will be connected on the PC board. This is one way to eliminate a tangle of wires while providing proper connections. It's important to ensure that the net labels match exactly, otherwise they will not be connected. We will use the Smart Paste feature to automatically create ports based on net labels. First we would select the net labels, copy them, and then we do this the typical Edit Smart Paste. We want to make sure that the Enable Array is not set because we only want to create one set of ports at this point. So let's hit OK. Now we have new ports with net labels assigned to them. We can place them and if needed we can adjust their location. Looking at the I.O. reset port, we should resize its height to show the overbar. Click on the port in the middle. And grab that square vertices to stretch it up. Now we can clearly read the name and see the overbar. Altium has a few more handy methods for adding wires that we should learn. Opening up the digital I.O. schematics, we see that it has no wiring yet. To automatically add a wire between components using their pins, you would select one, move it over so that its pins are overlapping completely on another component. Now you would grab it, hold the control key down, and drag away. Notice that as you drag away, wires are automatically generated. So to sum up, wires can be placed manually, copy-pasted, and auto-generated using components, or ports, or net labels. 
Looking at the J1 IMU connector, we notice that the 3.3 volt power port is rotated. Again, like with placing regular components, this is done using the spacebar while you are actively moving a part, or in this case, a power port. So grabbing it, starting to move, and hitting the spacebar, rotate it counterclockwise. Or again, shift and tap spacebar, rotates it clockwise. I normally avoid rotating power ports as a personal preference, but will do it if it simplifies the look of the schematics. In this case, I think it does. One more thing with wires. While actively routing a wire, you can change the routing mode by holding the shift key down and tapping on the space bar. The wire mode is reflected in the bottom of the window. You can try cycling through the various options, like so. 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and any angle are the ones that are normally used. I generally do not use the any angle option. I prefer the right angles. I think it can make the schematics look cluttered, but again, it's a personal preference. Now skipping forward, we see that all of the schematics are wired up with ports and net labels as needed. This is a multi-sheet flat design without a top-level schematic to make the connections between the sheets. They are done automatically with the ports. To recap this module, the net labels are local to the sheet only, and ports are used for making external connections. So it's the ports that connect together the various parts of the design on different sheets, relying on the same name matching to make the connections. It's as simple as that. This concludes the Altium Designer Making the Connections module. In this module, we added wires, net labels, power ports, and ports. In addition, we explored the use of copy-paste and the smart copy as a design capture aid.